such places as the desert or other bare terrain where nature does not provide us with sufficient coverage, man himself must use his ingenuity to devise artificial methods of concealing his position. The most common of artificial materials used in camouflage is the garnished fish net. This consists of a supporting net into which strips of colored cloth called garnishing are woven. The ends of each strip of garnishing are tied to the net. There are two types of garnishing. One consists of garlands of a uniform color to suit the terrain. The other of multicolored garlands blending at a distance into a uniform matching tone. The patterns are woven so that 90% of the openings in the central part are filled thinning out irregularly and gradually toward the sides. Fish nets are available in various sizes. Those 12 feet square are used for machine guns and trench mortars. Nets 22 feet square for anti-tank guns, such as the 37 millimeter. Thirty-foot square nets are used for light tanks and small vehicles. Nets 36 by 44 feet are designed for field artillery weapons and trucks. For artillery use, the net should be provided with a 12-foot slit in the center of one of the long sides in order to enable the gun to fire. Medium tanks require a 45-foot net for effective coverage. Fish nets are folded in a standard manner so that they may be quickly and easily unfolded even in the dark. First, the net is stretched out on a level piece of ground. The men take positions by the long edge of the net. The non-com in charge gives the command down. At the command up, the men raise the edge of the net in unison and carry it forward. The command down is repeated and the men lower the net, hooking their fingers in the netting. When they lift the net, they take hold of the netting underneath as well, thus making the folds. This action is repeated until the men have reached the center. They then assemble on the other side and repeat the process. The last fold is carried across the previously folded part of the net. It is then stretched lengthwise. Men at each end fold in the last two feet and then walk toward the center, making a flat roll of the net. When the rolls reach the center of the net, one is folded on top of the other and the net is securely tied ready to be used at a moment's notice. When the terrain does not offer natural concealment, the exposed vehicle is an easy target for the enemy bomber. One common method of concealing a tank is to drape a garnished fish net over it. The folded net is placed on top so that it can be unrolled over the front and rear. The net is then spread out and poles or branches are inserted to hold it away from the sides. For most important in concealing a tank from aerial observation is to distort its regular form. The edges are then pulled out and staked down at six or eight places in an irregular pattern to complete the drape. In broken terrain, a draped vehicle will usually not be detectable.
When it is necessary to work under camouflage, as is usually the case with field artillery, the flat top is used instead of the drape. From the high altitude at which enemy observation planes normally fly, it is very effective concealment. A flat top is a garnished fishnet erected upon a wire frame. It must be about three times the dimensions of the area to be covered, heavily garnished at the center and thinning out toward the edges. The materials used for the supporting frame for the 36 by 44 foot flat top are 12 poles approximately six feet long, 20 heavy stakes, one half of a hundred pound coil number 10 gauge wire, one embrasure release and thimble, five pounds of number 16 gauge wire, a pound of eight penny nails, and the tools required are two mauls or sledges, two pairs of pliers, and two hammers or hatchets. Eight trained men can erect a flat top in about 45 minutes. Additional help doesn't save time, only increases the danger of discovery from the air. The non-commissioned officer paces off the outlines of the frame and indicates the locations of the poles. For a 36 by 44 net, the wire frame should be 40 by 50 feet to allow for stretching of the net. One of the two long edges is placed at right angles to the direction of fire. Two nails are driven into the top of each pole. Another nail is driven into the side about eight inches from the top. Two teams start driving the stakes for one diagonal wire, 12 to 15 feet from the corner of the frame. With the first two stakes driven, a man feeds the wire from the coil to prevent tangling, while another begins to string the wire over the nails in the sides of the posts. The wire pattern, when completed, will look like this. The ends of the wires are left long enough to fasten near the top of the poles. Stakes are also driven in line with the edges of the frame and on radial lines connecting the intermediate poles. The men work clockwise around the frame. When the radial wires are all in place, they are put between the nails at the top of the poles. Then the poles are forced outward to a vertical position, which automatically tightens the wires. The ends of the wires are tied near the tops of the poles to prevent slipping. The edge wires are then run out. Having fastened and tightened them by placing them between the nails on tops of the poles, the men insert the embrasure release and thimble in the center of the long edge facing the line of fire. The nails are bent over to hold the wires. The tightness of the wires is tested at the center of the frame. Here again is the completed flat top system. The folded net is placed on the center of the frame and unrolled on the long axis.
The men then unfold it over the heavy wire so that the slip is on the side of the direction of firing. Next, it is fastened to the edges of the frame with short pieces of number 16 wire. When the net has been fully tightened, the flat top is ready for use. The howitzer is brought into position and prepared for action. The working area under the central part of the flat top should be enclosed to remind the men to avoid the ground under the thinly garnished portions where they would be visible to the enemy. In order to avoid detection from an oblique view, care must be taken to break up the shadow by placing brush and other natural materials irregularly near the edges under the flat top. At night or during rain, the net is slackened so shrinkage won't damage it or the frame. The net will shrink five or six feet when wet and will stretch when it dries. At all other times, the net should be kept taut. If it is allowed to sag, the framework will show through as a distinctive spider web pattern when viewed from the air. To perform a fire mission, the slit in the net is unlaced and the embrasure opened. The use of artificial materials on desert or bare terrain makes it possible for a gun to remain effectively camouflaged until it is time for it to go into action.